Hey guys, tonight we are going to learn how to cut the foam in your Pelican case or Pelican equivalent. Well, there's really no equivalent to a Pelican, but you know, if you have a knockoff Pelican, if you can't quite afford a Pelican, which is totally understandable. I mean, this case here is the retail on it's 400 bucks for a gun case. It's, it's not cheap. Um, but we're going to learn how to cut the foam for your gun. The way I do it translates to no matter how you're going to do it, okay? Now, some things are going to be different on your gun. You know, maybe you're not putting a scoped rifle on the case. Maybe you're using, you know, you're using a Pelican with an AR that you take the optic off of or something, okay? Um, in this case, we're using uh, one of my scoped rifles in this Pelican case. And the big thing here is, is layout. And we'll go over that here in a second when I can get the camera a little closer. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and we're going to put the case off to the side, pull the foam out because this is actually three pieces of foam and, uh, and show you the layout here in just a minute. See you in a Alright guys, so this is a Pelican 1750 and it has three pieces of foam. Now make sure if you buy a Pelican, make sure you buy a Pelican with the foam, okay? There are places out there that sell Pelicans without foam, um, but you want to buy it with the foam because the foam, like... On, on Pelican's website, the foam for this case is about 80 bucks or something, and it's three pieces. You got the top piece here, which you don't ever do anything with. I put targets behind it, okay? The middle piece, which is the piece that we're going to cut, and then inside is the bottom piece, okay? And we don't do anything with it. That stays there. So the one we're going to mess with tonight is this one here. So we'll take this out. Set it off to the side here for just a second. Move the case. So this is the foam we're going to cut, okay? The first thing you want to do is figure out your layout, okay? Because once you cut this stuff, there's no going back. The big deal here is... You want to make sure that for all your stuff, like in this case, this is a little rimfire gun, so I'm not putting, I'm not making cuts for magazines because the rimfire magazines are so small. And quite frankly, with the Savage, I only have a few of these Savage magazines, so there's not enough of them to justify me making a cut. I've got some on order, but it is what it is. Um, but you want to figure out where you are in relation to everything else. So I've got my rifle, the bolt obviously, and a suppressor. You want to keep things at least an inch, um, you want to keep cuts at least an inch away from each other. So you want an inch border at least on the foam from the edges or from other cuts that you're going to make. And it's really simple stuff. Oh, the other thing reverse it. So I've got the case, I've got the gun and everything laid out like this, but when it goes in the case, it's going to be basically mirrored, okay? And there's two reasons for that. In a scoped rifle, if you noticed, I had the case opened up that way, which would put the scope where the hinges are, and over here is a carry handle. So with a scoped rifle, I like having the scope towards the carry handle so if you are carrying it and you drop it, you're not dropping it on the scope. Now Pelican cases are super tough and they're, you know, they're pretty much bulletproof. But why risk it? Okay, if you have a lot of money tied up in a in, in a piece of glass, then you know, just do it that way. You'll thank me later. So the first tool we need is a sharpie, and it's real simple stuff. Now I've already figured out where I'm going with everything on this, so you're just going to draw an outline. So here's the suppressor. I'm just going to draw an outline with the Sharpie. Don't worry about it being pretty. Don't worry about anything like that, okay? I'm going to draw an outline around the bolt now.
and then around the rifle. And again, just you're just tracing an outline like you did when you made turkeys with your hands in elementary school. It's the same theory. You're not entering an art contest. You just want a good outline to follow with everything else. Now obviously if you have a bipod on your rifle, you're not going to cut all the way down to the stock on the barrel, you're going to come around the bipod and everything else. Okay, part one is done. So I'll show you what it looks like. So here is what it's going to look like. Okay, and the foam is about two inches thick. And there's a couple ways you could do this. Okay, I've seen online a uh, somebody made their own hot knife, and it works great, but it just seems a little labor intensive for me. I personally prefer to use the new Magpul Dynamics fully automatic assault knife. Oh yeah! I guess Magpul is designing this uh, because of Colorado. So thank Colorado for Magpul's new addition to the assault market. But in all seriousness what you need is a sharp knife and an electric knife. Okay? You want a sharp knife to start your holes and an electric knife to finish it. So what you'll do, like I'll do the suppressor first. I want to start. There, I made a starter cut. Cool. Now, here's the trick. This is a one minute. You could do this with one person, and I'm going to. But what you want to do is you want to have the foam about waist height, okay? and you want to weigh it down on one end. So I've got this case of MREs, and there we go. Now here's the cool thing. Just like any other tool, if you let the tool do the work, you can never ever go wrong, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the suppressor uh, cut. Oh, wrong way, there we go. Put it in. The trick on these, especially when using an electric knife, is to just keep it perfectly vertical, okay? So, and if you just let the tool do the work, if you let the tool do the work, you can't go wrong. If you don't let the tool do the work, you're gonna have problems. I really don't like the safety on this new knife, Magpul. Do something about it. The problem with, with this method is, honestly, the problem with this method is that the electric knives don't like corners. So for something like a suppressor, probably just better off using a knife blade on the short edges, on the short ends rather. And it's going to get to be an issue when we're cutting out everything for the gun. But again, you're looking, you're not looking for, you're not creating artwork here. You're looking for a secure way to ship your gun, okay? So, what we do, there's another starter. Turn around, 
come back the other way. Now you can save these for later in case. So there's one cutout, okay? So like for instance, this is a cutout for a suppressor. If I decide that the suppressor is not going to reside in this case anymore, you can take and put this back in. And we'll go over that towards the end of the video. Uh, right now, I'm going to finish cutting everything out. Okay, it's going to take me a few minutes. We'll come back when everything is snug as a bug in a rug, and we'll finish the video. See you in a minute. Okay, here we go. The cutouts are done, and you'll notice that I cut inside the lines, and there's a reason for that because. When I was tracing, obviously, I was way, way on the out, way outside of the, of whatever it was I was tracing, okay, because you're looking at, you know, easily a half inch. So, if you cut a quarter inch or so inside the lines, you're going to make, your, it's going to be nice and snug, it's not going to be too restrictive, it's not going to be too big. But, if you find out, or if you figure out that, holy crap, this giant rifle piece that I just cut out, I cut it out from the wrong spot, it's reasonably easy to fix. If you look at the instructions that come with the case, it's, they say to use uh, contact cement or rubber cement to glue the foam back together. Okay? And you can. You absolutely can. However, if you do that, make sure you do it far, far away from the case itself. And I'm going to show you why. One of the cool things about Pelican cases is that they are airtight and watertight. And they achieve this by use of a rubber gasket. Okay? Here's the problem though. The rubber gasket doesn't like the fumes from rubber cement or contact cement. So, if you figure out that you screwed something up and you need to fix it, do it far, far away from the case and give it at least a couple, three days for it to fully cure because the fumes, just the fumes from it, if you have it exposed or in the case like this, it will screw up these rubber gaskets, okay? They will stretch out and they won't seal anymore. And that's something that you don't really want to, you don't want to spend the money to fix it. You don't want to buy another one. So just save yourself that headache. So now we are going to take and put this back together. Now you remember what I said about, especially with a scoped rifle, so now you just flip it over. Flip the foam over. And everything goes in nice and snug. Not too tight, not too loose. Now the first time it's going to be, especially with something like a rifle, you know, it's going to be a little snug, but the, eventually the foam will kind of form around it. So now, everything's in. So now you can figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your stuff. So like, you know, my cheek pad. No sense in cutting something out for that, right? You know, that can sit right there. Okay. Magazines, just wherever. A cleaning rod. I usually run a cleaning rod right here. Okay. And then everything closes up. Nice and tight. And your rifle is ready to go. Pelican 1750 case. Like you said, retail price on these is about 400 bucks or so with the foam. And you still have plenty of room. Plenty of room in here if you want to put other stuff. Just remember if you're going to keep cutting, 
like for instance when I finally get the magazines off back order and I have like 15 or 20 of them okay what I'll end up doing is I will probably tape them together and cut out a little block for them and set them okay but just make sure whatever you do you always keep at least an inch of foam between any one item or an item and the edge of the foam so it doesn't tear and then this one here comes out so I like to put you know like targets and stuff like that behind there if you can afford a pelican case seriously I saw this discussion on reddit or somebody asked this question on reddit a few weeks ago and they were asking about uh, uh, getting either a Pelican or a Plano, one of the fancy, fancy Plano cases, which is essentially a Pelican knockoff. And it's honestly, it's like comparing apples and oranges. If you can afford a Pelican case, then that's what you should buy. Okay, because honestly, there's really no, there's nobody else out there that makes a case that's even remotely comparable. Um, that's it. Let's see. Oh uh, boy. Oh, this rifle is a, uh, a Savage Mark II, TRRSR. It's a 22 long rifle um, with a Mueller APT 4.5 to 14 by 40 uh, mil dot scope on it and uh, 6 inches of sunshade. A Harris bipod. It has the Accu trigger that I've tuned down to around a 2.5 pound mark. Um, it's an awesome little rifle. Threaded barrel. In case you couldn't figure that out, nice threaded barrel, and it's a tag driver. And here before too long, I will have a video of uh, with this rifle featuring this rifle um, out on the range. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, much. It's going to be very enjoyable. I love shooting this rifle. It's uh, currently my favorite rifle to shoot. Um, I'm coming very quickly approaching 6,000 subscribers, which is awesome. So make sure you keep sending me questions. Send, send your questions, your viewer questions, to rich at guntorturetest.com. And let me know if you want me to answer them in a future video, because I want to do a second installment of the uh, viewer questions video uh, series. Uh, I'm not sure what's coming up next week. I don't know what I'm going to do for a video. I'll figure it out, though. I always do. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys next week. Rich from guntorturetest.com.